Welcome to Astro 1003 Astronomy in Space. We are the team that's going to be teaching you this course. And in this video, we'd like to introduce the whole course, introduce ourselves, explain what we're going to cover and how the course is going to work. Now, the bulk of this course, we acknowledge, has been filmed on the traditional lands of the Ngunnawal and Nambri peoples. And we've been privileged to learn, teach and enjoy the lands of which are theirs. So I'm Professor Paul Francis. I'm a professor of astronomy here at the ANU at Mount Stromlo Observatory. As you may be able to tell from the accent, I grew up in England. I'm infamous for talking way too fast in an incomprehensible pommy accent. Luckily, in videos, you can always slow me down. Uh, I did my PhD at Institute of Astronomy in Cambridge uh, on analysing new ways to uh, use artificial intelligence to analyse quasar spectra. Since then I've worked at the University of Arizona and for many years here in Australia. I'm famous or infamous for discovering that in fact most black holes are pink. I'll tell you more about that later if you like. Um, discovering a new class of object called Lyman Alpha Blobs in the early universe and I've actually got rid of 90% of the objects in our solar system. Most of the objects in our solar system are comets, and I was able to prove that actually there were 10 times fewer of them than anyone thought previously. I'm Dr. Brad Tucker, and if Paul speaks fast, I speak loud, so you can always turn me down. Uh, so my research is on supernova and dark energy, so big stars that blow up and how we use this to measure the growth of the universe. Uh, one of the big things we've been working on is seeing the first moments a star explodes and seeing the shockwave rip through the star, creating some awesome views for us. Uh, I also have a big interest in science communication as well as actually how we learn from science fiction in science communication. Hi, my name is Kalia Linton Noon. I'm a proud uh, Aboriginal woman from the Gamilaroi Nation, and I have a background in looking at space clouds, specifically space clouds that are made of neutral hydrogen gas. I use radio telescopes to be able to observe these clouds, specifically in the centre of our galaxy. I'm a PhD candidate here at the Australian National University, and I also have a big passion for science communication and education. Uh, my name's Peter Swanton, uh, I'm a Gamilaroi man, uh, and I'm an astronomer here at the Australian National University. And my research interests are around understanding traditional Aboriginal sky knowledges through a scientific lens, and the ways in which we can safeguard those knowledges going forward. Um, including uh, the idea of dark sky preservation and the, the night sky as a natural resource. The course is going to be broken up into four sections. The first of which is going to be on Indigenous astronomy, which will be taught by myself and Pete. So in our section on Indigenous astronomy, uh, we'll be exploring some of the sky knowledges and, and stories that are contained within our culture systems and their importance and significance, not only culturally, but scientifically, as well as for everyday life. We'll also be exploring the ways in which you can look at the night sky yourself uh, through telescopes and the way in which we as researchers uh, look at the night sky through our telescopes as well. Now the second, third and fourth parts of the course are taught by me and by Brad. The second part of the course is going to be about the sun, stars and galaxies. So we're going to talk about the most important thing in space for life on Earth, the sun that gives us life and energy. We're going to talk about some of the history and we're going to talk about how it actually works. And then we're going to go on to the other stars that fill the night sky and finally onto the larger scale things in the universe, other galaxies and large scale structures. The third part of the course, also led by me, is on planets, asteroids and comets. So the little fluff that goes around the sun. And we're going to try and understand why it is how planets were formed, why in some ways they are so similar, so different. We're going to talk about killer asteroids from space, killer comets from space, what's out beyond the orbit of Pluto, and could we actually colonize space? In the final section of the course, we're going to be exploring space, space technology, and space travel. And it's a little bit more than just talking about rockets. We're going to have to talk about a whole bunch of areas of science and research that we really haven't focused on, from economics to law and medicine and everything in between. Will we go to the moon soon? Are people gonna live on Mars? Is there a future for us mining asteroids or could we ever travel to another star system? These are some of the concepts we're gonna explore in this final section. And while for the majority of this course, you'll see the four of us in front of the ANU studios, we'll be exploring other facilities at ANU, Mount Stromlo Observatory, the beautiful Siding Spring Observatory, some of the other facilities, and also having guests from various areas that will help us understand these concepts that we're exploring and visit some of the best and most iconic places to understand astronomy and space on this continent. 
Now, as well as the four of us, there are two more crucial members of the team who you're not going to be seeing so much of because they're usually behind the camera. Uh, we are the people behind the camera. My name is Raphael. My name is Tang Yao. And we are a media staff from the ANU, and you may see us um, here and there uh, behind the scenes of this uh, course. We've been um, hard at work with uh, these guys in the studio and around Australia uh, filming this amazing uh, content, which we hope you guys enjoy. And let's high five, man. Okay, so let's show you how this course is going to work. Now there are three things you need to do as a student in this course. Now the first is to watch the lessons. The lessons are our online equivalent of a lecture. So these are on edX. If you go to course tab here, you will see the different sections and you can expand whichever one you're up to. And here are the different lessons, each of which is roughly equivalent to a lecture. It'll tell you roughly how long it will take. Some of them are longer than others. Let's say we're up to this one here, stars lesson three. What you'll see along the top is links to all the different sections of this lesson. Generally, it consists of video followed by a question, followed by a video, followed by another question, and so on. So here we've got the video. Below the video is the text that covers the same content. So you can either watch the video or read the text, whichever you prefer. My normal recommendation is to watch the video first time around, and then you can come back and look at the text when you want to revise what's there or look up something to help with the homework. After, when you're watching the video, you can change the speed uh, to make uh, me go slower. Uh, you can adjust the volume and generally click on this you can watch the entire thing on YouTube if you prefer. Once you're done with that go next and there'll be a question. Each question is based on the video that's just passed. Now if you have any questions about a video or you're stuck on the question underneath every video and every question is a discussion topic. This is a place to ask questions about that question or about that video. Also, if you do have a question, look down here because you might find someone else has already asked it and it's already been answered. If you have more general questions, you can always go to the discussion tab up here and you can post a general question. Usually this is the right place to ask questions rather than emailing the course conveners. We don't mind you emailing us, but normally if you have a question to ask, so do another 50 students and it saves effort if I can just answer it once. If, of course, it's a very specific question like, I'm going away to compete in the Olympics, can I have an extension, please? Then the email is entirely appropriate. But if it's more like, when is the exam? Or this isn't working? Or how do I solve this problem? Then post to the discussion forum. We'll keep a close watch on it. Now, after every lesson, there is a short test, which will test what you've learned from reading or watching the videos in the lesson. It's only two minutes long and has just four questions. However, it is a timed test. You can't look at the test, go back, read the lesson, and then come back and answer it because your two minutes will be long up. So you need to make sure you've done the lesson first before you click on the two minute test and then do those four questions, which should be fairly easy if you've read and understood the lesson. The test questions are randomized, so different students get different questions. So that is the lessons. You can check how much you've done in this by the progress tab. Now once you've done all the lessons in one section, so you see the four sections, indigenous astronomy, sun, stars and galaxies, planets, asteroids and comets and space flight. So once you've done all the lessons in, say, the sun, stars and galaxies section, you should then go onto a wattle and do the homework for that section. So here is the homework for the stars section. So there'll be a set of notes for what you need to do with questions. And you write up your answer. You can handwrite them and scan them or word process them or write them on a tablet, whatever you like, as long as we can read it. Save it as a PDF file and then submit it down here and then we will mark it and get some feedback to you. So that's the second thing you have to do in the course. 
The third thing you have to do in the course is the final exam. Now that will appear here on Wattle at the appropriate time and you can read it. You'll need to you'll be given four hours to do it. Uh, you can do it at home. It's an open book exam. You can look up any amount of notes as you do it. And then once again, you need to write it up some way. We'll get word processed or scanned up to you and upload it here and we will mark it and get the grades to you. So the questions in edX are worth 20% of the mark. The homework is worth 40% and the final exam is worth 40%. So I hope that all made sense. Uh, remember that if you have any questions about any of this, just use the discussion forum to ask us about it. And now it's time to get on with the course. <laughs>